Hey guys, so I have looked over these books a little bit since I opened this last night and I'm going to give you kind of my first impressions of Simply Good and Beautiful versus the old, the Good and the Beautiful math. I can't remember what it's called. Just math. <laughs> so, and I'm also going to show you um, my other option for math for my second grader for next year that is um, Singapore and I'm still I guess I'm still deciding between the two math programs which one I'm actually going to use for him because he is my math whiz he's really he picks it up really quickly he's really good with math so I'm um, I'm debating which one I'm going to use and I'm just going to show you guys my first impressions of these I guess three different math options that we have so simply good and beautiful math and the old the good and the beautiful math as well as Singapore math. Okay, so here, this is what I just opened for you guys. This is Simply Good and Beautiful Math. It is, of course, beautiful. The artwork and um, graphics on this, it's just, it's very visually appealing. And here is the math box that goes with it. And back here, I have the Good and the Beautiful Math 2, the old version. And you can see there was, or there is, if you have this still, there's my weekly planner. So they do some um, learning about keeping track of their time and just time management. And I'm not sure if this one is used in level two, I can't remember. But this was my son's um, my place value chart that he used last year when he did level one um his eye got erased <laughs> this is laminated so my kids would draw on it with um dry erase markers and they always made their numbers into characters because both of my little boys are just creative like that there's my doggy <laughs> she's hanging out with us today okay and then you've got the math box. So here's the two math boxes. So it's definitely no barking, bro. Quiet. It's definitely um, smaller. Takes up less space. This is cardboard. This is wood. So quality-wise, this is gonna. Be much okay. Sorry about that. My dogs decided to bark at nothing. <laughs> do your dogs do that, or is it just mine? All right, so here's the two different math boxes. The old one, again, is cardboard. The new one is wood. Um, this actually stood up to use at our house pretty well, but I didn't let my kids just um, have at these boxes. They were put away when we weren't using them. And then inside, it is loaded with um, things that you cut out from the book itself as well. I mean, they weren't in there to begin with. We cut them out and we just threw them in here when we were done with them. There's all kinds of game boards and the game instruction book and then all these different manipulatives. So a lot of parts there. But then this um, Math 2 box is much simpler. Let's see if I can open this with my hand this time. No. Okay. So I need two hands to open that. <laughs> so the Math 2 box now is much simpler. Um, and it comes with money. Last time, this box didn't come with money. They just asked you to um, have so much coins on hand. Um, and then, there's a lot of wooden pieces here instead of kind of chipboard things that they used to use. But, so it's, it's less. There's definitely less hands-on for the new Good and Beautiful Math 2. Still hands-on, but less. There's less things to keep track of. Okay, and now what I noticed about this, so inside here, you've got still, let me see if I can find a good page. You still have quite a bit of narrative here. So you're reading all of this to your child and you're working through this narrative portion with your child as you're teaching them the lesson. And that is similar to how the old Math 2 was. There's less narrative, so all of this was narrative things that this is all stuff that you would read to your child as you go through the lessons and now you see there's definitely less of it in this book um, and there's also I noticed so I would call this a spiral approach to teaching math um, it's my understanding that basically 
in a spiral approach, you're learning one concept while you're also constantly spiraling through review of what you've already learned. So if you continue on with the lesson, you'll see they're, they're reviewing different things that they've already learned. And they do that with every lesson. They'll have a new concept they're learning, and then they'll go through review of things that they've already learned. Um, and that's kind of, to my understanding, that's kind of like a spiral approach where they're constantly spiraling through um, review. So and that's the same thing that they did in their last book as well. I think they just, they kind of made things smaller to fit in this so you don't have two books but it's still very visually appealing and they had mathematician studies before they don't have that in this new book um, <clears throat> so definitely more parts to the old math more books more hands-on more narrative to be read to your child and the new one has less hands-on um, higher quality however this math box and there's just one math book that you're working through here. Okay, so also I wanted to show you guys just, for my son in particular, I'm considering, so I bought this um, back when they had the sale because it just kind of felt like a no-brainer to just buy it and then we'll go from there. If I don't use it, I don't use it. Maybe somebody else can use it. Anyway, so I bought the math level two for him and then I bought the new math level two for him because I wanted to see what it's like um, and I thought maybe we could use it. So last year he did math one with the good and the beautiful for the first half of the year. My dog is eating. I'm sorry if that's really obnoxious. <laughs> uh, and then he did Singapore math for the second half of the year. Okay, so with Singapore math, he did really well with this. And I'll just kind of um, show you. He didn't do all these pages because some of this stuff he had already learned. So this is what a first grade boy's work looks like. <laughs> He's not the one that likes to color everything in. <laughs> he made it colorful and that was it. <laughs> um, but he did a good job and he picks up on these concepts really quickly. Sometimes his handwriting was really nice and neat and other times not as much. Oh, we skipped those ones. Okay, so this will be um the one that we do if i decide to go with this next time so you see it's just it's black and white so if you have a child that's easily distracted by a lot of color then um, this work is actually really nice um and my my kids sometimes are distracted they are able to get their work done more easily when it's in black and white like this now this whole program isn't black and white though there's um color in this textbook so they have for Singapore math, they have a textbook and they have a workbook. So the textbook, you go through with them and it's very visual. If you have a visual learner, these um, younger books in Singapore, it teaches them really through pictures. So they look at this picture and you'll maybe read this to them if they can't read it themselves. And you go through this, the lessons with them and it's just, um, it shows them the concept and it shows them like this thought bubble they do this a lot it, it kind of shows them how to do this in a very visual way um and then if there's like manipulatives that we need with this i will grab things in our house that we have so for instance over here i keep this jar of rocks and we'll use this for manipulatives there's different colors in here too so if they need different colored objects We'll use these rocks. I also have some shells. Um, I have some clips back there and sand. That was for a different project. I have some money. This is our coins that we keep in here. And then, oh, there's my shells. So we have shells and we have buttons. And this is all stuff I've just picked up at like Hobby Lobby and Michaels and um, just things like that over the years because I've been homeschooling my kids for going on 10 years now so sometimes we'll even just use pencils or colored pencils or markers or whatever um, so it's kind of nice to just grab your own manipulative sometimes I'll tell my kids go grab stuffed animals and we'll use stuffed animals as our counters if we're trying to do something more hands-on um, so 
I have to decide whether I'm going to use this Good and the Beautiful Math 2 or the old one or Singapore with my son. And um, yeah, maybe I'll share that with you guys in a future video, more of a, a comparison. But that's just a real brief overview of these three choices that I have for my son. And um, so, yeah, Simply Good and Beautiful Math 2, Initial that. Impressions. That's my kids playing a game in the background. Um, I think it's beautiful. I think it's high quality. I think it'll be a good program if this is a good fit for your teaching style and your kids. Thanks for joining me, guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for future videos. Um, I plan on doing um, kind of vlog style, I guess. This is my life. These are my kids. This is my home. Stay tuned for more.